centuries after the fall of the Second Empire, savage nations and petty tribes competed for dwindling resources across a vast, post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yet while most, born around the fall of Bast, were destined for lives of hardship, some joined larger factions in the hopes they might offer a measure of security and stability. Among the most influential powers of Kenshi was the United Cities Empire, formed as a successor state to the Second Empire through an alliance of cities in the south and northeast of the continent. Their territories included the Hook, the Bonefields, Storm Gap Coast, Heng, Bast, and the Great Desert. Their cities were Drifter's Last, Clown Steady, Katan, Morn, Brink, Heng, Bast, Shobatai, Stoat, Bark, and Heft. In addition to offering walled settlements defended by samurai armies, the United Cities was largely free from discrimination based on religion or race, with most citizens left alone so long as they obeyed the law. However, this state also lacked many fertile lands and was ruled by a feudal aristocracy and overprivileged emperor who sought to increase their wealth and power at the expense of the population. Over time, the class divide grew so extreme, the nobility made poverty illegal, forcing low-income peasants out of the cities, where their only protection was the occasional samurai patrol. A corrupt slave state, they not only captured foreigners, but also abused the law to arrest their own citizens, profiting from their forced labor. Drug use was also highly illegal, with most shops refusing to buy hashish, while guards randomly searched those entering their cities. The imperial government and economy were supported and fortified by the Traders Guild out of Heng, allies of the United Cities that brought in goods during times of hardship. Yet this wasn't always enough to prevent catastrophe, like when a terrible famine struck the southern half of the empire. Although the Traders Guild sent food shipments, bandits and raiders blockaded the roads, stealing what was on its way. Making matters worse, the southern nobility fought to hoard the few goods that made it through, leaving the rest of the population to starve. Desperate to survive, citizens rose up in the Red Rebellion, leading to the death of many, including the Emperor Anzai. Eventually, the nobility crushed the uprising and selected Tengu as their new emperor, a cruel, spoiled, callous dullard meant as a puppet for the aristocracy out of the capital of Heft. Imprisoning enemies like the assassin Luquin in Tengu's vault, the emperor ruled the United Cities with the aid of his inner circle, including Lord Inaba of Stout, Lord Yoshinaga of Heng, Lord Nagata of Shobatai, and Lady Sanda of Bark, as well as Captain Igor, a masterful warrior who led his elite army against their most dangerous enemies. Inspired by the peace, stability, and order of the Empire, a group of vigilantes formed the United Heroes League, acting as an unsanctioned paramilitary, enforcing laws as they saw fit. Yet the organization mostly focused their efforts on bullying and attacking non-humans. While the Heroes League rose to defend the United Cities, the brutal, corrupt slave state more often inspired rebellion, which they faced from Bossimian and his rebel farmers in Sinkun to the north, former peasants and slaves who fled the empire and now survived through banditry. Then there was the slave rebellion that liberated the city of Morn in the Bonefields, turning it into a largely free settlement under the influence of tech hunters. The United Cities also fought the anti-slavers of Spring in Stobes Gamble, led by the legendary warrior Tinfist, former friend of Catlon, ruler of the Second Empire, as well as Valamon's Reavers of the Ark in Stobes Garden, a faction of vicious slavers who wished to overthrow and replace the lazy, corrupt nobility of the United Cities to form a more efficient and competently administered government. In addition to these many enemies, the United Cities was also in a constant state of war with the cannibal tribes of the West, and was recently invaded by the Holy Nation when the city of Bast was destroyed, leaving the region an active war zone. Once a growing cult in the Second Empire, the Ocranites of the Holy Nation rebelled against their skeleton masters and founded a realm in the fertile lands at the center of the continent. These territories included Ocran's Gulf, Ocran's Pride, the Arms of Ocran, Ocran's Valley, and Rebirth establishing the cities of Bad Teeth, Stack, and their capital, Blister Hill. According to their beliefs, humans long ago lost faith in their great and powerful god Kitrin, yet when a horrifying calamity arose, they repented and begged Kitrin's help. A merciful deity, he forgave his children and sacrificed his life to cleanse the planet of sickness. Kitrin was then reborn in two forms, Ocran, the god of day, warmth, and renewal, associated with human males, and Narco, god of night, cold, and destruction, who represented females and non-humans. Much of the cult's early history revolved around peace, personal responsibility, and kindness to others, but over time, their more extreme elements gained authority, discriminating against servants of Narco, who they blamed for the first extinction, an event in the ancient past which nearly wiped out humanity. 
In addition to hating technology, they developed a racial hierarchy where Greenlander and Scorchlander males were considered clean children of Ocarin, while human females required taming and were treated as property. Shek were seen as corrupted, beastly humans who could be redeemed through the purification of slavery, while Hivers were also thought to be former humans. Now so far gone into their beastly transformation, they could only be enslaved or their lives ended as a mercy. Soulless skeletons were entirely irredeemable and should be killed on sight. Ruled by the Holy Phoenix, a lawgiver and champion of Ocarin, his spirit lived on by passing into the first male child born after his death. Under this theocratic government, the holy nation discriminated against women, enslaved non-humans, and forced religion upon their citizens. Yet they also offered walled cities protected by a fearsome army with fertile lands providing plenty of food and water. A powerful slave state, the holy nation believed in purification through forced labor, sending captives to many sites throughout their lands, including Rebirth, an enormous mining camp where many toiled until death under a giant statue of Ocarin. Provoking rebellion with their brutality, the Holy Nation outlaws of the Border Zone and Hub formed from exiled citizens and former slaves, some of whom continue to worship Ocarin, but believe the Holy Phoenix and his followers corrupted the religion. There were also the flotsam ninjas of the hidden forest to the north, composed largely of women and slaves who escaped the Holy Nation. Led by Maul, they trained by fighting nearby cannibal tribes, increasing their might to one day challenge the Holy Nation. They too believed in their own version of Ocarin, which did away with the discrimination against women. In addition to facing rebel groups, the Holy Nation warred with the Northern Cannibal Tribes, the Shek Kingdom of the South, and invaded the United Cities with the destruction of Bast, ending a long stretch of peace between these states. At the time of the invasion of Bast, the Holy Nation followed the 62nd Holy Phoenix, a leader so devout that at the age of 16, he sentenced his own family to be purged in fire. The Holy Phoenix was aided by High Inquisitor Seta of Stack and High Inquisitor Valtena of the Ocran's Shield military camp, as well as the elite Wrath of God army sent against their fiercest foes. Possibly descended from genetically enhanced humans who served in a military enforcer caste for the Second Empire, over time the Shek people's appearance changed, developing purple skin while growing bone plates and spikes all over their bodies. Embracing these changes, they let horns grow long as a sign of martial prowess while those defeated in battle had their horns cut off. At some point, possibly after the fall of the Second Empire, the Shek migrated to the Sten Desert, Border Zone, and Spider Plains, where they lived as warring tribes until the mighty hero Kral united them to form the Shek Kingdom, which eventually established the cities of Squin, Last Stand, the Great Fortress, and Capital Admag. Legends claim Kral was finally killed in a battle outnumbered 100 to 1, but his legacy lived on for centuries, providing the basis for Shek government, warrior culture, their strict honor code and life philosophy. Continuing on, according to Kral's teachings, the Shek kingdom was ruled by their greatest warrior who could be challenged to honorable combat, killed and replaced. This idea of all-out devotion to warfare echoed throughout every aspect of their society, believing the aim of every Shek should be to die in glorious combat. Only victory or death were considered honorable, therefore those defeated but left alive had their horns cut off, leaving them to choose between disgraceful exile or life as a second-rate citizen of their society, performing the non-military duties necessary for the prosperity of their civilization. Following a strict caste system, the Shek also discriminated against other races until individuals proved themselves in combat. Hated enemies of the Holy Nation, they were often at war with the human, theocratic bigots to the north who considered all Shek beasts which must be enslaved and purified of their corruption. Yet the Shek also fought among themselves, breaking into factions over disputes of leadership and other conflicts. Under the reign of King Shagger, the Shek Kingdom continued its legacy of relentless attack, waging war against the Holy Nation, United Cities, and any other enemy presenting itself. Yet this strategy was failing and their people falling to ruin, after years of conflict led to the fall of settlements like the Great Fortress, the Old Front Lines, and others. Nevertheless, Shagger refused to change tactics, ordering a final suicidal death charge into enemy ranks, so the last of their army might die as true warriors. But not all were willing to throw away their lives so easily, causing the warrior Bayan to publicly object. To everyone's surprise, Bayan was then backed up by Asada the Stone Golem, a member of the Invincible Five, considered one of the best fighters in the kingdom. Engaging in an epic duel, Asada killed Shagger to rule as Queen of the Shek, with Bayan as her advisor. Though she still valued their warrior code, 
as Sada sought to reform their society and ensure long-term survival by pulling their forces back from the Holy Nation front line, making peace with the United Cities, and opening their borders to trade. Although this did much to stifle their decline, conflict continued not only against foreign powers, but also smaller factions and rebel groups like the Bugmaster, a mysterious man some say is centuries old, living in an abandoned outpost with a connection to spider insects within his territory of Arak. Though no one knows his origins or purpose, some believe he is the last of the ancient humans who once ruled the First Empire, while others say he is a genetically engineered creation of the Second Empire. Due to his location, there were those who believed he was raising an army to attack the Shek Kingdom, but the evidence actually suggests he sought to invade the Ashlands, gathering much information about the Second Empire exiles and their leader Catlon. There are also rumors suggesting the Bugmaster keeps human teeth. A more traditional enemy to the Shek Kingdom came from Kral's Chosen, led by Ida the Flying Bull, a loyal friend of Shagger who refused submission to Isada, establishing New Kralia in the Sten Desert, west of the Great Fortress. Similar to Kral's Chosen, the Berserkers stood against Isada's government, wishing a return to the old ways of aggressive warfare. Establishing a village in the Spider Plains, they also had a strong presence further north in Berserker country. Led by the exiled warrior Suchon the Ghost, it is believed he was a warrior of high station among the Shek until defeated in combat, possibly by Gorillo, leader of the Gorillo bandits who then stole his sword. Surviving the encounter, Suchon was disgraced and his horns cut off, yet rather than accept his fate and lay down his arms, he became Ghost and vanished into exile, where his reputation allowed him to form the widespread Berserkers. The final rebel group troubling the Shek Kingdom was the Band of Bones outlaw crew, led by Tora the Fearless, also called Tora the Gutless, another Shek warrior who lost a battle and had her horns cut off. Yet similar to Ghost, she would not lay down her sword and fled into exile where she formed a bandit crew. Though her main camp was in the Sten Desert, east of the Great Fortress, her people roamed the Bone Fields, High Bone Fields, Shem, Shun, Spider Plains, Hook, and Swamp. As humans, Shek and skeletons spread throughout the continent after the fall of the Second Empire, they encountered the Hiver species, insect-like humanoids who functioned as an extension of a larger hive run by a single, all-powerful queen. Found in vain, Dreg, the Fog Islands, Royal Valley, and Greyshelf, their origins remain a complete mystery even to scholars, with possibilities that included the Second Empire or rogue skeletons genetically altering humans to create a worker caste, organic robots who obeyed without question, possibly even meant to replace humanity. Others suggest perhaps they were native to Kenshi, growing larger and more sentient over time, or migrated from another land or even world. In any case, individual hivers were fiercely loyal to their hives, but could lose that connection if they remained out of contact for too long, becoming exiled hiveless, forced to wander the wasteland on their own. These hiveless eventually grew more independent and capable of living rich, active lives, yet even so, they often suffered from depression as they felt purposeless without a hive. Over time, Hivers separated into three distinct cultures, the first being the beige and light brown western Hivers, friendly peaceful traders open to foreign visitors in their villages throughout the territories of Vane and Dreg. The pink and purple colored southern Hivers, meanwhile, were hostile aggressive meat eaters who attacked trespassers in the Royal Valley and Greyshelf. Finally, there were the blue fogmen of the Fog Islands, mad roving Hivers without a queen who attacked anyone they found in their territory. Those able to escape the Fogmen might find refuge in the nearby independent city of Mongrove, but often remain trapped, unable to escape the region. Possibly created by ancients from the technologically advanced First Empire, legends claim skeleton robots eventually rebelled against their masters after witnessing the Obedience Massacre, in which humans grew fearful of the giant behemoth robots created for war, and so ordered them into a massive pit to be buried in metal. Ironically, it was because the behemoths were so loyal and obedient, they marched toward their own destruction without resistance. Enraged by the death of their kin, skeletons orchestrated a mass extinction event, destroying the First Empire and wiping out all humans except for those saved by the hero Stobe, last of the behemoth robots, who forsook vengeance and sacrificed his life to save the last of the creators. Traumatized by all the death they caused, and deeply shamed by the selfless nobility of Stobe, many skeletons were unable to live with this guilt and committed mass suicide, while others learned to live with the pain, forever plagued by bouts of depression. 
there are even some who believe the skeleton practice of regularly wiping their memories to avoid insanity may have originated from the madness induced by causing and witnessing the first extinction. Though skeletons became the dominant power of the continent, much First Empire technology was lost, leading to a chaos age where surviving humans descended into primitive barbarism, while the robot population drastically decreased from their inability to create more of their own kind. Even after the long years of the Chaos Age, skeletons could not escape the guilt of their past actions. And so a group of heroes, led by the great warrior Catlon, banded together to found the Second Empire. Possibly ruling with the aid of his friend and advisor, the fearsome Tin Fist, Catlon's goal was to redeem skeleton kind by creating a safe, prosperous environment where humanity could thrive. Establishing their capital in the southeast, an area with many technological ruins from the First Empire, including the remnants of a possible space elevator, the Second Empire eventually expanded to become a mighty power with a caste system of their own, placing skeletons as the dominant masters. To protect the human population, Catlon and his government established a police force under General Hat-12 and an army which included the legendary Hydraulic Knights under General Jang. Among the technological advancements possessed by the Second Empire, they were adept with genetic engineering and so enhanced the human race, possibly creating well-rounded Greenlanders with no disadvantages and a slightly heightened ability to farm, perform scientific research, and cook, while Scorchlanders specialized in adventuring and crafting as they were faster, more agile, stealthier, able to eat raw meat and heal faster. Others were given the traits and minds of warriors to create a cast of enforcers, while some even claimed the Second Empire or a rogue faction of skeletons created the Hivers as a worker caste, since they excelled at manual labor and when in a hive, followed their queen's orders without question. Though Catlon's nation prospered for many years, the rise of a human cult led to rebellion and war, which in turn made the Emperor more aggressive and tyrannical in his efforts to maintain the Empire, to the point he started killing innocent citizens and locking human children in cages. Understanding the madness of this anti-human campaign, many skeletons abandoned Catlon's empire, including his friend Tinfist, who still desired to help humanity and so became a liberator of slaves. Unwilling to allow any further betrayal, Catlon removed the sentience from many of his remaining skeleton followers, turning them into mindless robot slaves. The final catastrophe came when a great famine struck, leading to the dissolution of the state as individuals migrated to more resource-rich lands or else ended their association with the Second Empire. As all this occurred, Catlon remained sat on his throne in the capital, surrounded by mindless storm thralls, unwilling to see the error of his ways, stewing in anger and bitterness for the next thousand years. Those few skeletons who were not thralled yet remained loyal to Catlon formed the Skeleton Legion, continuing to patrol the Ashlands in the name of their Mad Emperor. Yet few of these loyalists remained, and so most of these contingents were made up of Legion thralls. Other non-sentient robots which patrolled the region included Iron Spiders, Cleanser Units, and Screamer Units. With the last remnants of Catlon's forces tucked away in the southeast, the rest of the continent moved on, naming these mysterious, aggressive, hostile skeletons as Second Empire Exiles while forgetting the details of their powerful past. Although entering the sonorous dark and ashlands could prove a lucrative enterprise for adventurers seeking ancient tech or research books, as it was a site with great ruins from two mighty empires, it was also a hostile, poisonous wasteland teeming with dangers. After parting ways with Catlon's empire, the rest of skeleton kind sought their place in the world as some went mad, were reprogrammed turned to banditry and cults, or scattered across the continent, while others worked to create their new home of Black Desert City in the Deadlands, where they were protected from outsiders by harsh environmental conditions, including constant acid rain which hurt non-skeletons. As many of their kind retained memories from long ago, some robots became scholars like Io, the second-in-command at the Great Research Lab in World's End, who made it his mission to hide certain parts of their history, presumably in an effort to avoid further discrimination and hostility between the peoples of the continent. Although the Second Empire remained at war with all organic races, by the fall of Bast, most got along well with individual skeletons outside the Ashlands, and all were welcome in Black Desert City if they could survive the environmental conditions, as it even featured the Scrap House, which served as the finest weapon shop in the land. 
However, the Holy Nation, descended from the human cultists of the Second Empire, never forgot their hatred of skeletons, even if they did not fully recall the true history of the continent, and so were hostile to all robots and technology, which they claimed were agents of narco, seeking to attempt a second extinction of humanity. The cannibal tribes of the north also told stories of skeletons from the past, forever hostile and fearful from their days at war with the hydraulic knights of the Second Empire. After the fall of the Second Empire, the continent descended into an age of primitive barbarism, becoming a dystopian, post-apocalyptic wasteland, littered with the ruined remnants of two advanced civilizations. While most adapted to this new reality, some few banded together to form a guild of adventurers, dedicated to scouring the landmass so they might sift through rubble and ash, braving many dangers to seek technology from the past, as well as books, scrolls, or even bits of parchment, which might provide insight into the history of the continent. Establishing various waypoints and settlements, the Tech Hunters, as they were known, controlled parts of Flats Lagoon, the Outlands, the Arm of Ocran, and the Bone Fields, holding three major cities in Flats Lagoon, Black Scratch, and World's End. In time, they also came to possess Morn, a former United Cities holding, which became independent after a successful slave revolt and later fell under the influence of Tech Hunters. Among the more prominent members of their organization were Trep, Zed, and Fish, who each contributed to writing the Tech Hunters notes, a series of books acting as guides for other adventurers, describing potential opportunities, dangers, and special features of the lands they visited, including the Leviathan Coast, the Ashlands, the Black Desert, the Holy Nation, the Shrieking Forest, and the Swamps, even writing a shopping guide for where to locate specific items. A largely neutral faction that did not involve itself in the politics of other states, they worked closely with their allies in the University of Machinists, a guild of scholars who in addition to researching the history of their world, studied the technology recovered and repurposed it to help the people of the Wasteland. Around the fall of Bast, the Machinists were led by the Hive Prince, Finch, from their great science lab in World's End, as well as his assistant, Io, a skeleton robot with much insight into the past, as his kind were created under the First Empire and lived under the Second Empire, surviving the destruction of their world twice over. Although Finch was a brilliant scholar who published many fascinating works, he was unaware that his second-in-command Io was hindering their progress by obscuring certain parts of the past, specifically censoring anything that described the role of skeletons in the fall of the First Empire, which ended with an extinction event that nearly wiped out humanity. Similarly, the skeleton bookshop trader in the Great Library of Black Scratch seems to have taken the position to help keep certain facts about the past hidden, no doubt referring to his people's role in the downfall of the continent. As it so happens, one of the books in the Tech Hunter's notes, describing what was found in the Pools of Obedience, is no longer readable as ink spilled over the pages, which suggests it may have been intentional sabotage by a skeleton who wished to keep information about this region secret, since this was where their behemoth robot kin were massacred by the humans of the First Empire, possibly leading to the Civil War and First Extinction. Other prominent machinists included Atticus, Idad, and Sabina, who each regularly published and debated their findings. Although their origins are unknown, at some point after the fall of the First Empire, many humans in the north of the continent became cannibalistic, forming primitive tribes that painted their bodies and hunted their own kind. According to the scholar Finch, who authored The Cannibal Plains, The Evolution of Men, there were many advanced labs from ancient times in these regions, making it especially strange that underdeveloped tribes existed in a land of such advanced science. While he admits they may have simply been reduced to cannibalism through severe famine, Finch also offers more interesting possibilities in that they may have devolved from toxic environmental factors, or else perhaps were exposed to a dangerous substance from their labs. It might even be that they descended not from those who operated the labs, but the human subjects used in harsh experiments that eventually induced them to madness. When the Second Empire rose to power under the skeleton warrior Catlon, their military forces, including the legendary hydraulic knights of General Jang, went to war with the cannibal tribes of the north. As the extent of the war is unknown, it's possible skeletons acted only defensively, or else perhaps the enemy simply proved too numerous. But the cannibal tribes ultimately survived the war and even outlasted the Second Empire, continuing to live in the land of their ancestors. Yet even so, the tribes suffered greatly against the skeletons, to the point that over a thousand years later, cannibals still told tales about the terror of hydraulic knights. 
By the fall of Bast, many centuries after the collapse of the Second Empire, the cannibal tribes continued to prosper in primitive camp-like settlements across the Cannibal Plains and Darkfinger. Operating under what seems to be a patriarchal hierarchy, the tribes were led by a grand wizard from his capital in the Cannibal Plains. Then there was the Savage Meat Lord, serving as their greatest warrior and cannibal chiefs to lead the tribes. Other ranks included their best warriors, the Mighty Can Heads, followed by cannibals and scrawny cannibals. Although they attacked anyone who entered their lands, the tribes have long been at war with the people of the Holy Nation and United Cities, and were likely responsible for the downfall of Deadcat, a startup nation in the north, which failed to grow because of constant cannibal attacks that eventually left them a scattered minor power. The cannibal tribes also started moving into the hidden forest, leading to war with the flotsam ninjas, escaped women and slaves rebelling against the Holy Nation. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Barachado, Eren Gruyer's Spicy Sky Frugran, Tom Moonstruck Waters, and Tio the Iron Banker. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.